How's it going, guys? It's your boy Mike here, and I have a very special guest today with us, Matt, the lumberjack landlord, or potentially soon to be name change incoming. Any good ideas yet, Matt, for the name change you're thinking about? Um, there's been there's been a lot. I can tell you that. I think. Um, I mean, I really appreciate my boys sticking up for me with uh, one rental at a time with Mike Zuber and Dion when they when they do their courses and books. Are like, hey, yeah, we'll throw those in too. So it's like it's like a thousand bucks worth of prizes on the line. So yeah. I think yeah. um, there's been a, there's been just a ton. The stuff that um, I talked to somebody this morning, one of those one of my subscribers this morning, and they were like real estate guru. And I was like, ah, I don't know. A good friend of mine is, uh, you know, through YouTube is Spencer Cornelia. Mm -hmm. He does nothing but expose bad gurus all day long. And I told right. him, I was like, just give me a heads up before you blow me up. If you ever found something that I did wrong. <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly. There's, yeah. there's more channels out there exposing guru blowups than there are really actual good gurus. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And actually that's kind of going to lead us into the topic of today's video. So there's a lot of times where, uh, you know, we talk about the guys that we don't really like Spencer Cornelia does it. I know you've called people out. I have on my channel, some of my most popular videos are flaming fake gurus, fake yeah. real estate, flantrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, and con entrepreneurs. The yeah. guys who are just a bunch of shady scammers. So anyways, I thought that today, Instead of just sitting here and roasting people like Bigger Pockets for how much we, you know, really appreciate the genuine, sincere work they bring to the marketplace in terms of selling their own courses and programs, maybe we could talk about who we actually do like. So, Matt, I wanted to ask you, in the realm of YouTube, who is your favorite influencer or guru? Who do you like? What do you watch of theirs and why? I would say... Uh... I would say a, I, I do watch a lot of one rental at a time only because it's not only Mike's view, it's eight experts. So it's like going to eight different channels. Um, so I really do like Mike's framework and how he set it up. Um, I really enjoy Uneducated Economist who was just on my channel mm -hmm. yesterday or two right. days ago. Uh, Simon is, uh, he's just a different breed. Man. <laughs> he is like self-taught and, you know, always looking for the other part of the question and always, you know, providing the other part of the answer. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uneducated economist is just absolutely just lights out. Um, other real estate guys kind of not in the one rental at a time circle. Um, Anna Kelly does Wednesdays with Mike, but she has a huge presence on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'll read pretty much everything that she puts out just because she's, I want to say her portfolio is right around like 160. 60 million, I think wow. listed. It's wow. Mad. I didn't know she was that big. Wow. She's, yeah. She's got a, and so she does <laughs> syndication. She, she owns stuff with partners. She owns stuff outright. She does Airbnb luxury Airbnb. So she's really super diversified. Um, and I love, it's kind of like for me with guys that do home inspections, you know, not throwing any shade on the guys that only took a five day course, but I know more about home inspections than you do. Right. And so I bring guys, I only hire home inspectors that had a minimum of 10 years in construction. Yeah. The only type of home inspector I'll hire because I don't care about what your little booklet says. <laughs> I need the core expensive stuff, not miss. And right. I can't have a report that says fix or replace, fix or replace, fix or replace 400 times. That does mm. me no good. Mm -hmm. So, um, so from that perspective, just that kind of a, having that kind of a background in something, her 10 years or, or 12 years in finance, you know, enterprise level finance, working for AIG, really understanding how the system works. I think that she just brings a whole level of credibility um, to everything that she does and she's just so good at it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So Anna Kelly, uneducated economist, certainly Mike, um, you know, I think, and I think that then there's the other guys like yourself and Dion and stuff like that, where I watch you guys and there's always something that you can pick up something mm -hmm. that you can, you know, hone your game. But I would say the, the, the bigger changers are, you know, uneducated economists, when he was talking about the bullwhip effect of, of materials, mm -hmm. he crushed it. He was talking about that a year ago saying, I'm in the position now where everything that we order 10 of, we get two of. Mm -hmm. So they're telling me order 30 of them. Right. And now those orders are coming true and you're right. getting 30 of them. And mm -hmm. now they're having to blow them out because they got a bunch of money tied up in inventory. That's not moving. Mm -hmm. So I, th and he, he nailed that a real long time ago. And that saved me a lot. That saves me, you know, that, that actually made me consider, you know what, I'm going to put off a bunch of these projects because I think that when the economy softens 
and things tighten up financially for folks, I think that there's going to be the opportunity to put people to work that their only other option is sitting at home. Right. And I like to keep people busy, you know, certainly when their job, when their other job isn't available to them. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I thought it would be a great thing to chat about today because, you know, I mean, I love watching YouTube. I know you watch a lot of YouTube and wow. I assume that the people who are watching us probably watch a decent amount of YouTube or at least listen to podcasts. Sure. And so, you know, I always like to find new people to listen to and new perspectives to get. So we've heard a bunch about like the one rental at a time family. And really the only one that's not a huge part of that is probably the uneducated economist. Everybody else is, yeah. is in the family, but okay. So outside of real estate, outside of finances, who else inspires you? Who else do you listen to? Do you, uh, do you have any other like, you know, guilty pleasures, any motivational speakers, anybody like that? Or who, maybe in your personal life, your, your friends, your family, like what, who and what inspires you and why? Um, I think, I think honestly, networking, meeting other great people in, in the industry, um, you know, there's a, because I'm from a smaller area where my three towns combined are only a population of about 50,000. Um, there, <laughs> there is, yeah, it's small. Um, and so what's really interesting is, is I own 121 units in a 50,000 person population. So, right. and so 400 tenants is how many we have. So if you look at it on an annualized basis, like we've got a chunk of the population renting from us. And so there's other landlords that are about as big as I am. Um, some that are, some that are one or two, only two that are much bigger. And then there's like four or five that are kind of right around my size. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really interesting was, is I met one of their property managers. Her name is Neely. The woman is awesome. It's the first time I ever met her. It was kind of crazy. Um, but just meeting her, like the level of professionalism, how she goes about it, the, the fact that she's, she shoots you straight, you know, when we were talking about properties and she's just like, yep, these are going to come available. She's like, we'll give you a shot at these. Um, she didn't really know me from Adam. It was just purely a gut feel on her part saying mm -hmm. I, this guy is a player, like he's going to work with us and, and we think we can probably do business together. So I really like that personal touch. Um, and, you know, certainly from an industry perspective, because um, it also teaches me the people to stay away from, um, you know, there was one guy who I've beaten him on the last three properties he's been on. Mm -hmm. And every single time he told me I overpaid. I'm not showing him. My, I'm not showing him my financial model, but I'm blowing the doors off on those deals. Those are all 20% plus deals for me. Right. His math is bad. Yeah, his math is bad. So you know, he helps. He helps keep me motivated to keep on. You know, keep on keeping on and doing the numbers and and that. But uh, yeah, so I'd say personally, um, I'd say personally, it's just kind of meeting other, I guess, frenemies, competitors. You know, um, mm -hmm. in, in our markets. Um, and then I think other guys on YouTube. So I, I, can't, I can't take Gary V's hustle porn and NFT projects anymore. <laughs> like, That's actually where I wanted to go next. Hold on real quick. So sure. we've got the big hustle guys, the work harder guys, Grant Cardone, yeah. Gary V. Yeah. Uh, to, to a lesser degree, I guess, Dean Graziosi, maybe Tony Robbins kind of fall into that. They, they almost oh. feel it's like, it's like they took business and and try to take a religious aspect of it. Like let's turn business into religion so people can feel good. So why don't we go one at a time? We'll start with Gary Vee since you brought him up. What are you millionaire with 117, soon to be 120 plus different units? What do you think about the advice that Gary Vee gives? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me hear it. Um, so, so I, so I think it's, um, so when you're a, an elite entrepreneur, and I, I guess I would probably consider myself that because mm. I think when you're in that 1%, I think you're elite or in that fraction of 1%, I think you've gotten to elite. Um, you know, Jordan wasn't elite until he had a few titles under his belt. I've right. got a few titles on my belt. So, you know, everyone could tell he was a great basketball player, but until you start winning championships, you're not elite. Right. Mm. Uh, or most people would consider that. So I think that with Gary V where it kind of jumped the shark for me with him was the whole NFT project thing. And, you know, tons of money being pumped into the market. And so everything he touched turned to gold. Mm -hmm. Now, I won't, I mean, for those meetings that he shows up in that he's sitting down for lunch and I used to watch those and it'd be like 10 people in the room need to get one question. Mm -hmm. That lunch is like $110,000. God, 
How, Give me 110 how, grand. I'll run your business for you for 90 days and I'll set up all the <laughs> processes you need right. to make it very profitable. Right. But you like, say that, that now, but until you yeah. get millions of people offering you that 110,000 and then Correct. people offering you 10 million, that's yeah. when your time does become more valuable. But exactly. yeah, it just seems so self-aggrandizing. Like how could you ever get to the point where you're like, you can't even have lunch with me unless you pay me 110 bands. Yeah, Jeez. It's, it's, a, it's a lot. And so I think, the other thing too is, is I think for uh, for elite entrepreneurs, kind of where I started this, I think for elite entrepreneurs, honestly, I think a lot of his stuff is just no duh. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. work, do it more. Well, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, well, put put it in front of people that actually need that. Okay. Yeah. There's too many people that are wantrepreneurs. Right. They want to be entrepreneurs and they aren't. Mm-hmm. They aren't. Well, I started in my own business because I don't want to work for other people, bro. Every one of your customers, you're working for them. Way it yeah. goes. Yeah. I'm an entrepreneur, you know? And so there were a lot of businesses I tried where I got them successful in a very short period of time, but they weren't successful enough that if I even followed the trend that I was getting, it wasn't going to be any real money, mm-hmm. not real money. It was going to be money, but it wasn't going to be real money. And I want real money that I don't have to show up for to make. Like last night when I slept, I made a ton of money. <laughs> I slept, I make money when I sleep. And, and that's what that's what an elite entrepreneur does is they make money when they sleep. Okay. So so Gary V, you used to watch him a lot more. Now you watch him less. A lot of what he says seems like it's just common sense, but it, okay, so if so I'm beginning, I watch him in, the, in a little bit just to get a little bit of worth at work ethic. Mm-hmm. That way it makes you feel bad about how little you're working. I was never that way. I worked hundred hours a week. So if you're working 45 and you're like, man, I'm grinding, I'm gr- man, I'm, gr- I'm all in. No, you're not 40. Hours. What? 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 You're not yeah. grinding. Yeah. Stop. Who gave, who gave you permission to work, Stop. to barely work and only work 40 to 45 hours? You know, who, who, who allowed you to become so lazy? Why do you think that's full time? I, I, I grind harder than people named chastity. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to God. <laughs> okay. Okay. Moving on from Gary V. What about Grant Cardone? You like him? Yeah. Yeah. So I like him. I think his company's going to blow up a little bit, but I love him. I, yeah. I love him. I think he's an entertainer. Mm-hmm. I think he's a great dad. I love mm-hmm. how he has his kids involved in the business. I love that. I think that kids so often and so many of the, of the, of the kids that are going to be never has been's, I think so many of them, they're going to be never has been because their, their parents never gave them a dream, never gave them something to shoot for, never had a high expectation of them. Man, my son's four and I grind on, I like, it's like, we show up at a yard sale and it's like, what's the first rule? Don't touch anything. What's the second rule? Be respectful. What's the third rule? You don't need something just because we're here. Like, those are the things that I want my kids dialed into. And it's not just about showing up. It's about doing the work, getting there and getting better and always being able to learn something. And so I love Grant's hustle. I think he's extremely smart. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest mistake that he ever made was going after non-accredited investors because they don't, you know, you're not accredited for a reason. Yeah. They're not ready to take how money. Yeah. You don't understand how money works. You don't understand the structure of these deals. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I think he's a brilliant, brilliant guy. I think the only challenge is, is I think that he is betting that the U.S. can't raise rates to six or seven because he thinks that they can't then service the debt. And that makes all of his properties with resets very scary. Yeah. Yeah. Time will tell. I guess we'll see. And I don't wish him to fail at all because I think he is immensely entertaining. And where there's a lot of fakers out there, he does build deals and he does get calls from companies and from banks saying, or, and even Fannie Freddie, like he's got an inside track mm-hmm. to where he gets called and said, Hey, we want to just have you manage this, take over this debt. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want to see the real Grant Cardone, watch all of his stuff now, but watch it in the spring of 2020. Mm-hmm. Okay. Watch his face then. Okay. Cause that's when all of his people stopped paying and you see it on his face. Right. I can right. see it like, he wasn't bubbly anymore. He was yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to be lucky if I can take a Cessna to my next stop. Forget about the, <laughs> forget about the G6. Okay. I, I want to I expand on this a little bit. Grant yeah. Cardone and Gary V. Very, very yeah. similar. Seem like they're cut from the yeah. same cloth. But in my opinion, there is a huge difference. I want to see if you know what it is. Um, but I want to ask you a couple. So you, you watch a lot of Grant Cardone, I assume, decent amount of it. 
Um, I'd say I used to watch a lot more of it than I watch now um, because I quickly, so I understand kind of all the business stuff, but it wasn't the type of asset investing I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And so I don't want to largely, you know, strategies for comm- like significant, massive, multi hundred unit, multifamily strategies that work on that don't usually work on small multifamily. Mm-hmm. And for me, my goal has always been, you know, I want to be very liquid and a two to four unit is pretty liquid. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Yeah. I could sell 10 of them in 30 days if I wanted to. Yeah. He would have a real hard time selling something that's not for a loss. That's a four or 500 unit building yeah. when the economy is in the dumps. Right. Like that's right. a much smaller list of people that can buy that. Yeah, I agree. Totally. So, okay. So he, here's the difference that I think, and this is important between Grant and between Gary Vee, and I think it's going to speak to their long-term success. So if you've watched a decent amount of Grant over the years, and if you've watched a decent amount of Gary Vee over the years, um, what's Grant's wife's name? Uh, I don't you've seen, remember. You've seen I've her, seen her, her a million times. times. She's yeah, all I've seen her, times, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen her a million yeah. times. Met yeah. her, Elena, met her. right? Elena, yeah. Elena Cardone. Okay. I'm you know, so Gary, embarrassed. I don't remember that. My name no, stopped. My daughter's name is Elena. So <laughs> it's all good. Okay. But, but what about Gary Vee? You ever seen a single video with his wife or his girlfriend? No, no, he just went through the horse. No, right. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Next yeah. question. All right. Yeah. Uh, do you know, uh, do you know Grant Cardone's pilot's name? The guy who flies around with them, does all the multifamily. Yeah, Ryan. Around? Captain is Ryan it? Seco, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who flies Gary Vee around? No idea. Yeah. You have any idea? No. Okay. What about no. what about Grant's right hand man? His hustler, right? He does the young hustler with him, Jared Glant. Jer- yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that yep, name? Okay. Jared, yeah. Yep. Right. Who's Gary V's equivalent? No yeah. idea. Yeah, no no idea. clue. Yeah. Okay. Grant Cardone's two kids. Now yep. you might not be able to remember the names, but did you've seen them on stage? You've seen them in the all shorts, the time. The videos, right? Sabrina and Scarlett, I think something like yes, that. Yes. Correct. Right. That's correct. Gary yep. V has kids. No idea who they are. Okay. And then for Grant, I can name his freaking cameraman, Johnny. I can name yeah. the, the, yeah. the head. He's the always head. yelling at Johnny. Yep. 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 The head lady of his office, Cheryl. Okay. Yep. This is this is important because this is why I think Grant Cardone is going to absolutely destroy Gary Vee in the long term. Grant understands that if he raises and lifts up every single person around him, if he invests his time and his energy into building up every single member of his family, his friends, gives them all an equal opportunity to become like him, to be successful like him, to get attention. He always talks about attention, get attention. And then there's Gary Vee. He's on an island by himself. And everybody is a subject to the whims of the market of entertainment or of attention. And Gary Vee can be hot. He cannot be hot. But Grant has an army of people who can ebb and flow together and, and all work together. And I think Grant is going to destroy, destroy Gary Vee in the long term. Because when Gary's gone, no one's going to remember who he is. But Grant's going to have his wife and his kids. And they're going to be saying his name until they die. Yeah. So I just well, think I mean, the digital contest. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I think that you know, Grant is generational Mm. and Gary is not. And that's a, that's a short sighted difference. Yeah. It's exactly the difference between the two. I think that, um, yeah, I think that Grant has done a phenomenal job at building the business that he's built, but like any great leader, the business that he's built is the people around him, you know, and Ryan didn't get to his point just because he said, I want to be next to you and be, be as good as you are. Right. Right. Like, <clears throat> Grant gives opportunity and then it's what you make of said opportunity. Mm-hmm. And that's why there's some guys just still sitting in the back room, you know, selling education courses. Mm-hmm. And then there's other guys that are, you know, flying on the road with him because they're indispensable or right. trusted right. to go, you know, pick out the new G six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I think I, I, I have always, always liked Grant. I've actually listened to him since about 2010, 2011. Wow. I worked in a, a car gr- stuff. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I'll explain yeah. why I was working in a granite shop and I was doing manual labor. I was installing granite countertops and the people I worked for realized pretty quickly that I was likable. I was friendly. And every time I went out to somebody's house and installed their kitchen, I'd always come back with an order to do their bathroom. Because I'm like, oh, well, you know what? We're already here doing this stuff. Let's, you know, why don't we? And they realized maybe we should make this guy a sales guy. And now I hate to be bad at anything. I hate to be the new guy on the block. 
So I went to YouTube, which at that time I spent most of my time listening to YouTube music and um, educational videos on Star Wars versus battles and things like that. Nerdy <laughs> stuff like that. Like who would win in a fight? Darth Vader or Iron Man? Yeah, I'll listen to a 30 minute conversation on that. I'm cutting granite. Dude, I'm a nerd. What can I say? You mean me. I understand. So anyways, so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to YouTube how to be a sales guy. And I heard Brian Tracy, who's like an old school sales guy, and some of these other dudes. And then all of a sudden I came across Grant Cardone, who was just talking about how to sell cars. And he hadn't even written half of his books yet. Nope. And so I just sat there and listened for hours while I fabricated granite and, and then would go install granite, listen to his stuff. And I've been a fan ever since. And although his message has changed drastically, sure. I don't think he's ever like given up on what he was like originally trying to put out there, which sell yourself, sell your image, sell your brand. And he just puts that into everything he does. And he's actually the one who got me interested in the idea of real estate because I had never thought about it before. And he started talking about his real estate. That's what inspired me to do it. So I've always liked Grant, but I'll, I'll stop. Uh, I'll stop opining on that subject. Okay, so I don't, dis- I don't disagree. I think Grant's awesome, and I think so. Um, so I was actually a corporate sales trainer for a number of years. Mm-hmm. So he's he's really good. He's really yeah. good at what he does. You know, people yeah. buy from people. The biggest element to why people buy or don't buy is they trust the person that they're buying from. Mm-hmm. And I think he does an amazing job of laying that out and people want to be in charge and make the decision. And Mm -hmm. you just need to give them all the data in a, in a, in a way that they can understand it, consume it and turn the data that you're giving them into information that then becomes actionable. Right. Right. Um, Okay. So we talked about Grant. We talked about Gary, even though Gary V in my opinion is nowhere near in the same league as Grant. I still don't think he's bad. I listen to some of his stuff. He has good points. You know, I think it's a little obnoxious when he goes and he talks down some eight year old kid trying to save up money for the boy scout trip, you know, talks this kid down from $5 to $3, you know, but whatever you want the likes on it. TikTok, That's fine. Uh, (laughs) Okay. But what about, what about somebody like Tony Robbins? What do you think about him? Yeah. Uh, a little uh, yeah not really my cup of tea he's a he's a he's a big influencer in this space he has been for like three or four decades and he's been doing motivational speaking for a long time why don't you like him um i think um i think because i'm probably that piece of the population that's just cut a little bit differently Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um what he's got i didn't need Mm -hmm. i guess and so i try and seek out people that you know there's only one person like me in my marriage. My wife is different. Right. And what she is, yeah, tell me about it. And what she has, like we joke about it all the time. You know, I'm it's, you know, usually it's like somebody 70, 30, one way and the other. And then the other person 70, 30, and that makes a nice mix. Hmm. And for me, I'm 90, 10 and she's 10, 90. And so, you know, she is kind and compassionate and, gentle all the time and very nurturing and Mm. I'm the lumberjack. And so I think that, that, that difference there. And so I think what Tony Robbins has, I don't want or need. I think a lot of people do want and need it because they came up from, you know, maybe broken homes and they need to hear that it's not their fault and they need to hear that they need to overcome. I think all of those things, all that messaging is really important. Not really for me, Mm. for me, I think Graziosi is just disgusting. I think, I, yeah, I think he's just gross. Yeah. And I think he, I think he tries gross. to, he tries to piggyback off of Tony Robbins, more genuine, sincere message. Yes. And I, think, I don't know why Tony Robbins lets him. <laughs> I honestly believe that. I think Tony is far more authentic than Dean. I think, yeah. I think Dean is, yeah, I, I, I would not spend, I would not spend five seconds listening to anything Dean Graziosi yeah. has to say. Yeah. Um, I think he's a master manipulator. Um, and I think that, Tony Robbins really does. I don't begrudge anybody for coming super for becoming super wealthy. I think he's helped a lot of people get out of their own way. Um, it's not witchcraft or magic. It's mm-hmm. eliminating people's mental barriers to getting them to be successful and seeing them of what they can be as mm-hmm. opposed to only what they are. And as a ninth grade dropout, that's not what, that was not a problem for me. Right. Right. So I, so you might've noticed when I started asking you these questions about who, Motive, uh, not who motivates you, who inspires you. I did not ask who motivates you Uh because uh, Tony Robbins is a motivational speaker. And I think that there is a difference between 
in being inspired and being motivated and trying to motivate someone versus trying to inspire somebody. So when you said multiple times, he just, he has what I don't need. He, you know, so he, he's, he's saying a message. It's good. It's well and good for those people, but I didn't need it. You know, that was what you said. And it's interesting. So you're an extremely successful person. You've done extremely well, given where you came from dropping out of high school at a young age, but you didn't need somebody else to motivate you. You, however, love people who inspire you like sure. Grant and like Gary with what they're doing and how passionate they are about that. What do you think the difference is between motivation and being inspired? So I think, I think, um, I think inspired is a feeling. I think motivation is an action. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of people that get inspired Mm -hmm. and sit on their asses and do nothing. Right. I think there's a lot of people that hear a story of a ninth grade dropout and that inspires them. Right. I'm glad it inspires you. Motivate, do something about it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I've, quite frankly, not really needed either. Like I don't need to be inspired. I don't need to be motivated. I instantly take to people that have excellence in their craft, whatever it is, Mm. you know, there's a lot of different genres of music. I hate, but I can still recognize when somebody's talented. Right. And also recognize when they suck. Yeah. yeah. But (laughs) that's, but that's, but that's kind of the thing for me is, is that having done, you know, having been elite at something, honestly, the self-confidence that that gives you, to drive and try anything else. You know, I'm one of those nerd dads who seeks out understanding what inspires and motivates kids, depending on their personality types. My three kids are extremely different. My Mm -hmm. daughter, Bryn, will most likely be a very powerful person later on in her life because Mm -hmm. she doesn't need to be motivated. She doesn't need to be inspired. And she is very staunch on the view unless you get her off of it. And the only way to get her off of it is you've actually proven to her that it's, that it's better. Mm -hmm. And so I think often people, you know, knock down stubbornness. You look at some of the most successful people in all time. It's because they weren't weak. It's because Mm -hmm. they were stubborn. Mm -hmm. Um, You look at some of the biggest failures of all time and it's because people were stubborn and didn't take any, you know, input. Um, so, yeah. So I think for me, I think inspiration is, is feelings. And I think motivation is action. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, the reason I asked this question is because I think that a lot of people, as much as we love YouTube, as much as we like podcasts, we like listen to it. And that's why we talked about all the different people we listen to. I think that the danger behind all of it is you can get trapped listening to these people and feeling like you're accomplishing something. And if you're listening to them for inspiration so that you feel better, that might not be a great thing. Um, or if listening, even listening to them for motivation, because some people would use those two words kind of interchangeably. Sure. Um, but what I think is extremely important is that you figure out or you force yourself to some, some way you have to turn the feeling you have into actual action. Otherwise, you're just going to be in the same spot years from now, listening to the next big influencer, hoping that you get started. As it's my goal, and I know your goal is to help new investors get started investing in real estate and you know, current investors do better, figure out how to take what you're listening to and turn it into action. Matt, that's pretty much everything I got for you, man, unless you want to close it out with anything else. Yeah. I mean, I think like we talk about it's, you know, really it becomes, you know, inspiration, I think still is feelings. And I think motivation creates motion, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's where most people fail is you have to be one of the top three things that uh, um, there was a study done and a hundred children psychologists looked at it and said, what are the three main factors to children becoming very successful? And it's that being okay to fail and that failure doesn't ruin you. It just teaches you a way to not do it. And you need to then pivot. Mm-hmm. And you need to be humble enough to be able to pivot. And so I get, I would say that I'm probably on the border of confidence and arrogance. And I think that once you've been, once you've gotten really good at something and you've done it time after time, after time, after time, then I think that that's where you have to watch it. Now I'm very confident in my skills and some skills I'm arrogant about them because I've done it so many times. And I've just not lost. Um, you know, Michael Jordan was more than a little bit confident. He was arrogant. And it's yeah. because he knew even if you were going to bull rush him in the lane, he was still going to dunk it on your face. Mm-hmm. 
And so I think that what really people need to recognize is they there's people that have gifts, talents, and abilities that they need to understand exactly what those are, what gets them going, what motivates them to take motion. When you take that motion, don't be afraid to fail. I have failed at things, plenty of things, and then recalibrated and made it better and then recalibrated and made it better. And so I think people need to be encouraged. I think that they need to recognize that if something's only inspiring them, it doesn't matter unless it's motivating them to make motion, create motion and take action. So that's what I would say about that, Mike. I agree, man. I like it. Well, I think uh, hopefully some people found something inspiration out of this motivating in the comment section below. Let us know what you liked. And until then, I guess we'll see you next time.